Welcome back to Reason for Truth. I'm your host, Stephen Garofalo. Welcome back, actually, to part two of Wisdom Delivers Nations, or the power of wisdom, right? This is part two from last week. Don't want to miss that. Part one kind of laid the foundation for what we're going to talk about in much greater depth today. Today, I want to focus down a little bit more on Wisdom Delivers Nations. And our truth text today comes again out of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 14 through 18, which tells us that wisdom is more powerful than human strength because it comes from where? God. God's wisdom is so powerful that even quiet words of a wise man are more effective than the ranting of foolish king and his kingdom who tries to ram through his foolish will and agenda by sheer force. It's Proverbs 9, 10. Spoken thousands of years ago, isn't it so just apropos for today? Hmm? 20, uh, what are we at? 2021, right? This leads us to ask, where does wisdom come from, right? Wisdom and knowledge. I want to talk to the scriptures or look to the scriptures for that. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. This answers where true wisdom comes from, by the way. Welcome to Reason for Truth, where the truth comes first and reasons come last, but where we're always and constantly learning, because listen, when we stop learning, we stop teaching, or at least stop teaching well. Today's truth is that God's wisdom is way more powerful than human might and even military strength. Today, in part two of this two-part series on the power of wisdom, I'm going to add to and explain in much greater depth the takeaways I provided. You remember I gave you five takeaways last week in our last episode in part one, and now we're finished with that. We're going to move on here to part two. We're going to get a better understanding really what wisdom is, where does it come from, and furthermore, when we as God's servant leaders lead with the wisdom of God through his word and the power of the Holy Spirit, God's supernatural wisdom can and will help us win some of the most seemingly impossible battles. This is how we become victorious in the midst of our depraved, fallen world, even amongst believers, believe it or not. In today's episode, we're going to pick up again where we left off last week. If you missed that, you want to check that out. As we spoke about in our last episode, part one, wisdom is more powerful than human strength. Why? Because it comes from God, and God's wisdom is so powerful that even the quiet words of a wise man are more effective, more powerful than the ranting of a foolish king who tries to ramp through his foolish agenda, his foolish will, by sheer force. An ancient proverb says this, as a fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. That's Proverbs 9, 10. Listen, that's just as good today as it was thousands of years ago when it was written. In our last episode, I talked about the story of the September 26, 1983, when Russian Lieutenant Colonel of the Soviet Air Defense Forces, uh, his name was Stan Slavisky Petrov. I'll call him Mr. Petrov or Petrov. It says that he saved the world from a nuclear war by, listen, way of his wisdom. This sounds like a biblical story found as well in Ecclesiastes, not exactly the same, but the principles I think are the same, whereby a poor man, a poor wise man, listen, he delivered a small but poorly defended city from a siege by a powerful king. So what do you have? You have a poor, little, tiny, undefended, really poorly defended city from this massive kingdom and military, and he became victorious. Listen, you can go back here that story in part one again. Today I want to pick up by reading the biblical passage by King Solomon in Ecclesiastes, again, which teaches us with unwavering truth that by God's wisdom we can be victorious in life and with our nation when we come to be dependent on God and rely on His wisdom and His power, not our own. So let's read Ecclesiastes chapter 9, again, verses 14 to 18. It says this, There was once a small city with only a few people in it, and a powerful king came against it, surrounded it, built a huge siege works against it, and now they're living in that city poor, but a wise man. And he saved the city by his what? By his wisdom. But nobody remembered that poor man. So I said, wisdom is better than strength, but the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are no longer heeded. And that's a big problem. We're going to talk about that today. Again, Ecclesiastes 9, 14 to 18. Listen, as promised, I'm now provide you, I'm going to develop, you know, more information, go a little more deep on those five key takeaways that I gave you last week about what God has for you and I in this passage. First, takeaway number one, let's talk about that a little bit more deeply. This is a small city. Is being overtaken by a massive, powerful king with a big military, I would assume, meeting the leader of the country being the king or another much larger country than this small little city 
You know, today you and I face many trials, tribulations, and attacks. We look at them from a human perspective based on human wisdom. We as followers of Jesus Christ are constantly challenged with having to choose between one of two roads. The first road is one of apathy in which we simply throw up our hands and say, hey, Jesus is coming. Listen, so I'm going to enjoy the rest of my time on earth, go to the beach. Listen, when the ship sinks, at least I've had a lot of fun and taken a lot of good memories with me. Or we could say, you know, listen, Jesus is rapturing me, and so I'm just going to live that way. But really, that's the first road. Second road offers a more challenging direction. It's much more narrow as much well, we're going to be unwilling or courageous enough or motivated to take it. It's the road which is much less traveled. Listen, taking this road means remaining calm. Remember that God is on the throne, and depending on His wisdom, and by our depending on His wisdom and strength to deliver the victory, you know, we can be victorious. Isaiah 35, 4 tells us this, and I'm picking up partway through. Ford says, Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. See, listen, as authentic believers in Jesus Christ, we must remember to be strong in the Lord and trust that God will come in His time to dispense justice and deliver justice and vengeance in his way and in his time and deliver us. Listen, his time, not ours. Looking at the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, verse 34 says this, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Listen, when we think that the battle is unsurmountable, we need to stop looking to the good old days of the past or the good days hopefully yet to come, and we need to start living in the present. God wants us to be dependent on Him for today, for today's needs. And listen, He's going to take care of tomorrow because tomorrow we have no control over. Matter of fact, today we have very little control. We do so when God's providence, His wisdom, and His strength and provision. Listen, when we take our eyes off the present, and on to the past or future, we depend on our own wisdom and desire over that of God's. Lastly, Psalm 115.11 says this, You who fear Him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. The question is this, do we really trust in the Lord? Are we really trusting in the Lord to be our helper and shield? Listen, when we get caught up in the materialism and comfort of this world, we take our eye off the ball, look on more on recreation. It feels better, I'm telling you, emotionally, mentally, physically. We take our eye off the ball and, we, and off of God's word and wisdom for his present plan for our life. And we begin to panic <laughs> and it's a natural reaction to respond with human wisdom, not God's wisdom. Human action, you listen, void of God's wisdom. That's takeaway number one. Takeaway number two is this. It's found in verse 15, which says, But there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Ah, let's pause to look at this poor but wise man that God chose to use to deliver, you know, what's considered by the world to be a small, little, unimportant city. The poor but wise man in this story was poor. Notice how he made it into the Bible. That's pretty impressive. But listen, this meant that most likely he had no real place of authority or influence in the city gate, but he was also full of God's wisdom. And in their desperation, what does the world do? Just as they did to this little old poor but wise man, and as the world often does, including many Christians, by the way, the citizens of that city, listen, they ran out of options. They realized that this small and unimportant poor, poor man was their last resort, and they did what? They listened to him and trusted to him. And listen, with God's wisdom, he delivered them, or God delivered them. Listen, had there been, I'm going to guarantee this, had there been a charismatic, or I'm going to almost guarantee this for you, uh, if there had been a, an option for a charismatic, well-spoken, wealthy man that, listen, he appeared to have wisdom, even if he didn't, but he looked good and he presented himself very statesmanlike. Listen, the city would have probably would have turned from this old, poor, wise man and towards this very charismatic, good-looking, sharp gentleman, this uh, charismatic, wealthy leader, probably. They would have looked at his direction first. That's what I believe. See, we do the same thing in the United States and in countries all over the world, I think it's, uh, listen, I've had a lot of conversations uh, with people, and I had a conversation with one young lady who worked for one of the most well-known Christian ministries in the world. She said, yeah, when we were having our last presidential debate, she said, listen, I, listen, I, I don't like the president. I'd rather have the Mormon candidate. As you know, the Mormon, we had a Mormon candidate back in the, this is years back, and, uh, and I was taken back by that. I said, well, hold on a second. Uh, so 
you don't like the one that's the way one speaks, but you'd rather have the one who takes uh, Jesus and Lucifer to be brothers. To me, that's a no-brainer that it's wrong. But that's what was said. But I think a lot of Christians believe that way. In other words, as Christians, we're not, listen, we're not uh, protected or we're not, it's not, it's not impossible for us to fall into this very same trap just because we're Christians. Many Christians do have and some will continue to do so to their own, you know, listen, demise. It was evident as to why, by the way, the Mormon candidate was very well spoken. He dressed, spoke really well, had nice shoes. Hair was this man, kind of light gray, and it just stayed with black in there. He looked really good, very charismatic. Carry himself more like a statesman than the other than his opponent did, the other candidate. Now, how often are we deceived from God's wise choices by our desire for a charismatic, good-looking, seemingly but unwise and ungodly leader? Point two should instruct us to look at the substance of our leaders, right? Not just the look of our leaders and, by the way, of ourselves. Way to look at what a person says, what they stand for, more so than what they look, how they dress, or how they sound into a, a camera. Listen, we act unwise when we fail to prioritize substance and wisdom over perception as reality and truth. Third takeaway, that was takeaway two. Uh, two. Takeaway number three is, listen, short and simple. Notice that the wise leader saved the city by his wisdom. Now, be clear that his wisdom came from God. Remember Proverbs 9.10, which tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Remember, we just talked about that, Proverbs 9, verse 10. This is very different from man's wisdom described in verse 1, uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, and then 18 and 19, which says, Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craft. Listen, as Christians, we are all to be wise leaders. The question boils down to one of two choices again. Those two choices, simply dependence on the world's wisdom or dependence on God's wisdom. His all-good, all-knowing, infinite wisdom comes it through the Word of God and leading in the Holy Spirit. Choice is yours. Choice is mine. The results will either be, listen, natural or supernatural. Considering the current state of the country in the United States and nations all over the world, godly wisdom delivers every time, by the way, according to God's will, that is. Dependence on the world's wisdom leads only to compromise and defeat. That's number three. Fourth, fourth takeaway is that, listen, is that when a wise person who uses their wisdom for the glorification of God to serve others here on earth, they're often all too, all too often, I should say, just quickly forgotten. Americans and uh, people in general of all nations, you know, we're very good at wanting to get back to the new normal or the get back to normal, I should say, not the new normal. We have short memories. So after a crisis, forgetting the lessons of the past and the people who God used to help them, like this poor old wise man, We've seen that in our history here and nations all over the world. Listen, nothing in this life stays the same. It just doesn't. We should learn to be accepting and flexible in the sanctification and the pruning the Lord has for our lives. Failing to do so leads us to sweep, listen, each passing crisis under the rug and behind us in an attempt to forget the trial the Lord has allowed us to go through, which he will use for our good. Now, Paul says in Romans 8, 28 in the NIV, says this, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. If we really believe and trust in this passage, folks, we can be assured that here on earth, as well as in eternity, that God's going to use these trials, our, our trials and challenges for his glory and for his good. Listen, when we fail to learn from the changes and the, and really the the errors we make from the past and the things that God wants to take away, you know, for us as takeaways and learning and take a new direction. We fail to be sanctified. We, we become stifled in our Christian growth and walk. And I think back to major events such as September 11th, 2001, when we experienced the attacks uh, that brought down the Twin Towers. People went back in droves to church for just a few weeks, maybe a few months at most. Then they went back to their life, right? Hey, listen, push on the God button. God, come save me so I can get back to my recreation. God doesn't work that way with God. <laughs> it's just a matter of time before he'll bring you to your knees again. He keeps doing that, and Americans and American Christians keep, listen, we keep messing up. We've got to make sure we get in the Word, take God serious. People say, well, that's true for you, but not for me. If God exists, which he does, it's true for all people. You could deny it, but the truth is what is, 
It's what corresponds to reality, and it's saying it like it is. The Bible says it like it is. God exists. He is I am. It doesn't matter what we think and say about him as humans. God is God. He exists. He's on the throne. We're his created creatures. He's the uncreated creator. I'll leave it at that. Anyways, we go back and we have a short memory. And what happens? We get comfortable again with this new normal as a result. Listen, most people went back to living in 9-11 as they did before, after they just, you know, before the Twin Tower attacks. Now, failing to come closer to God as a nation, as a result, creates chaos. You know, fast forward seven years to 2008 financial collapse. Many people lost their homes, their retirement, their wealth. And listen, the markets went crazy. And uh, listen, they ought to have been really, uh, in terms of people being in the market, people 67 years old with all their retirement in the stock market, it's been an age-old wisdom that's talking about wisdom you just don't do that because if the, if the market crashes you don't have the, the years to recuperate it if you're 20 30 40 even really up to the early 50s very different once again we see human wisdom above god's wisdom but after a year or two of 9 11 or the 2008 rather financial collapse failing to make changes in their life god has once again said, where are you? What's going on here? You didn't make a lasting change. Then came 2020 election, the mayhem of the 2020 election. And what's taken place was, listen, we saw what? Cities burning down, police stations and police departments being defunded in the name of social justice. Other countries in the world are looking to gasp as to saying, oh my gosh, natural law. Everyone understands that's not the way to do things. It doesn't matter what, what, listen, it doesn't matter what nation you're in. Nobody wants lawlessness. Listen, we've been experiencing a lot of things for many years that are, I believe, trials, and God's getting our attention. And if we don't, God's going to keep turning up to the heat till there's no, you know, we're to the point of no return. Maybe we're there now. I don't know. I do know, I believe the United States and the world is going to be a very different place in 10 years. That I can guarantee you at this point. So here's the point where we fail to make a spiritual U-turn, which we covered. You could see that in a recent episode a couple weeks ago. God will allow us, listen, to come up for a bit of air before he allows us to be subject to be dunked again <laughs> and with some self-inflicted trials and punishment that we bring on ourselves, not God. And uh, listen, by way of his releasing his hand of protection and provision, okay? So many people see this in, as really as inevitable, when it's not. If the majority of Christians would just head to the Bible, live by biblical wisdom, implement that in their, in their life, and trust in the Lord and his word, and really act accordingly, even wise leaders, if God's going to raise up godly, wise leaders. I think he could deliver this nation and all nations back to a Christian, Judeo-Christian, uh, really, ethic. Right now, people have asked for pleasure and pornography and wealth over that things of God. And as such, God's going to just rip those things from us, absolutely. What do we have on top of that? On top of that, as a bonus, we get disorder and, and evil at levels that we've never experienced in really recent history books. Okay, now... It's subsided for just a little bit at the moment. People are catching their breath post-COVID. The problem is that even within the body of Christ, that well, quite often we find those who are enamored by a system that makes life easier for them, gives them free money. As a result, they trust in man's, right, fallible worldly wisdom with the disregard for God's all-wise and powerful wisdom. And as a result, we become fast-tracked to the next trial which is coming, a matter of time. This leads us to the present day in 2000, uh, 2021, okay? Listen, people simply want to get back to the new normal. And, uh, and listen, God's Word repeatedly tells us this, in that the world's wisdom is not God's words, wisdom, okay? Verse 16 says this, But I say that wisdom is better than might, though the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. Huh. The fourth point is simply, is listen it's a hinge for this passage and it's a warning for us to remember that god's wisdom is better than might and human strength we must not have short memories this passage also tells us to be careful when we minimize or we despise the wise that are maybe perhaps unimportant people and right now the wisdom of the quiet old wise man or a woman he raises up listen we need to pay attention if it's wise and it's biblical we need to pay attention we if we don't do so Maybe, listen, we're headed towards a new self-inflicted, larger trial, guarantee you, certainly on, I think, on a 
biblical level, probably an international level. And this is a trial in the making. And by the inverse, when we depend on the Lord and listen to the wise over the charismatic, God will protect, provide, and prove himself to be in control, which he is all the time, of all things. That's number four. That was a long one. All right. Just wrap it up here. Fifth is a little shorter. Fifth and last, King Solomon tells us that though through a little bit of folly and forgetting the quiet old man's wisdom, meaning the wisdom of the least important people who reflect God's truth in all wise ways, that we risk destroying the gains won by the wisdom to begin with. Verse 18 says this, wisdom is better than the weapons of war, but one sitter destroys much good. This passage makes clear that God's wisdom is better than weapons of war. Verse 18, and yet wisdom is not invulnerable because one sinner can ruin much good. The good brought about by God's wisdom to begin with. Now, after giving the example of the poor wise man whose wisdom did not benefit himself, benefited others as well as himself, but the whole city benefited. Remember, that's uh, verses 13 to 16, uh, chapter 9. King Solomon warned that God's wisdom is more effective and powerful than man's might and military strength. King Solomon uses the word a little folly, folly meaning a lack of good sense for foolishness. Wisdom can protect one's, listen, who possesses it. And if we had God's wisdom, we have some protection. Listen, playing on the word good or better, which are the same Hebrew word, Taba, P-O-B-A-H, we see a contrast between the word one, O-N-E, right, and much. Solomon says that one sinner destroys much good. In other words, a little folly can destroy the great value of wisdom of one man. As dead flies in perfume ruin it by giving a bad smell. Listen, takeaway number five is that we need to depend on God's wisdom and power to deliver us according to his wisdom, power, and plan. But we cannot stop there. We must not fail to forget the old wise man that society deems unimportant because by doing so, we will it's going to lead only to our going back to our old sinful folly itself, right? Invoking even stronger judgment by God through the re release of his hand of blessing, provision, and protection. So listen, to recap, first, we need to trust in the Lord as our helper, our shield. Second, prioritize substance and wisdom over perception as reality. Third, remember that we have two, you know, listen, roads to choose from between God's wisdom and the wisdom of the world. Which two, listen, we have to choose. You have one road or the other. There's no in-between. Fourth, remember the lessons from the past and the old men and women God has used to deliver us and our nation from, listen, the unwise and the wicked and one wise and wicked leaders and nations. The best image to start is by remembering our Lord Jesus Christ, who was ruthlessly nailed to the wooden cross for you and I, and mankind, all of mankind, that we may not experience eternal damnation. Listen, once we forget what Jesus did for us on the cross, as, listen, we're going to easily forget what the old wise man and all wise woman perhaps might say. It's natural. We continue to suffer. We will. God's judgment by, again, by way of his hand of protection, blessing, and provision. In the contrast, if all we do is daily remember Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross and take that seriously, we're going to change the world. That's the good news. We're going to be able to have a great defense from evil and, uh, and we'll have a more prosperous and happy, peaceful life and world. Now, fifth and lastly, we need to go back and don't forget number four first, because doing so, uh, you know, is a sin. And it won't go unanswered. You remember, a little folly can destroy great value of wisdom of one godly man. I pray that you, here, number five, will develop a list that I challenge you with last week and pray daily over that list. Hope perhaps the Lord will grant you wisdom and discernment to deliver you and the nations or your nation from the hand of evil by way of God's wisdom. It's not over, folks by way of his power, by the way of his wisdom. I trust you're going to do that. I pray that you'll, you'll do that this week. Perhaps you can share that with other people. Perhaps do that with your husband, wife, brother, sister, mom, and dad. Who knows? Anybody else, your friend, neighbor, co-worker, right? I think it'd be a great way. And uh, perhaps even in your Bible study or your quiet time. Lots of options there. Please listen. Let's make sure we're committed to God's wisdom. Stay in his word. That's where wisdom and knowledge come from. Fear of God, remember, and then be in his word. Appreciate you tuning in. Listen, please leave your constructive comments below. I promise I will respond within a very reasonable amount of time. And again, all comments are reviewed. We respond to those who are put forth in respect and certainly love. You could be direct. We're not uh, 
we don't have any hostility. We appreciate that. If you want a more in-depth training, by the way, check out our brand new online training academy at equippedacademy.com. If you're listening on podcasts, by the way, or maybe perhaps a video, please go ahead, man, just go ahead. Smash that subscribe button. There's a little alert bell down there. Bam, Sicilian hook. I always tell you that. And I always promise you, listen, I can't promise you a little Italian guy is going to come out and bring you a pizza every time you get a new episode. I wish I could, because if I could, I would. And then you just hit the button. The alert bell tells you new episodes up. You go get a pizza, get yourself, listen, maybe an eggplant parmesan, maybe chicken parmesan. Sit down and enjoy the episode. That's what I'm talking about. Life didn't get any better than that. Remember, subscribe alert bell. Make sure you tune in next time. We're going to be talking about Tom Brady and this whole issue of witchcraft next week. Man, I tell you what, that's an issue that uh, that's hot. And I tell you, we got to wonder, seems like he's saying, hey, every time we pray this, uh, or not pray this, but my wife sets up an altar, you know, we seem to win the Super Bowl, and we have this. It seems like he acts like 100% that witchcraft is benefiting for him, okay? I would say that goes against everything we've said today. Wisdom of God is certainly much more superior than the wisdom of the evil one, Satan. And when we depend on our own human strength, the way I think Tom Brady and his wife are, it's a matter of time before they fail and fall and fail big time. So thank you for joining me today. Until next time, I'll see you for the next episode of Reason for Truth. I'm your host, Stephen Garofalo, and this is your Reason for Truth for today. Thank you.